you have your Bibles with you, I'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 5, and we're going to begin reading in verse 3. Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 3, the Bible says, And he, uh, meaning Jesus, entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he should thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had, had, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, uh, and sa saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draw of the fishes which they had taken. I'd like to preach, the Lord be my helper this morning on the thought, God recovers His own. Dear Lord, we thank You for Your goodness and Your watch care. Lord, we thank You for all that You do for us. We pray this morning that You might send the Holy Spirit this way this morning, that You would mingle uh, with Your Word and take it to the hearts of those that are listening. And we give You great praise for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, reading uh, from fairly familiar verses, uh, a lot of the times uh, different points are emphasized in this, but uh, we're going to focus on Peter this morning and his response to what had occurred. Back in verse 3, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, it says that he entered into the ship. Now, if you know the rest of this story, the rest of this text, and John's text is the same way, there were so many people interested in hearing Jesus that they kind of wound on him, and he needed enough space to preach the truth. They were so interested in the Word of God and what Jesus was saying, they were kind of thronging him, and so he had a need. Now, I want you to see that the Lord needs your services. And in, the, in that sense, I know He's sovereign and He's holy and He uses what He will, but there is a need for you to do. If that were not true, there would not be uh, the crowns that we could lay at the feet of Jesus. And so I want you to see that Peter was very willing at somewhat of a surface level to serve Jesus. Now, most of us, at some surface level, are willing to serve Jesus, but when it goes deep, uh, many of us have a great problem with that. Uh, verse 4, Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out in the into the deep and let down your nets for a draught or a draw. Now, I want you to see that, number one, the Lord Jesus provides for our needs. He doesn't necessarily provide for our wants because our wants are wicked because they stem out of the flesh. But He does provide for our needs. Also, in this, Christ was proving that in fact He was God. That He was God in the flesh, that He knew all things, He understood all things, and He even knew where the fish the fish swim in the bottom of the sea. And so he wanted them to understand that and he wanted them to know that and he wanted them to rejoice in it and so he sent them out on this trip. I will say this, that Simon was disgruntled over the command. And most of the time we're a little disgruntled with the command especially when it interferes with our routine. Now, all of us have a routine. I get up before the rest of my family generally, and I ready myself to work, and I, and I get up fairly early. I'm in Clark School, usually at my workplace by 7, a little bit after 7, and if something happens to disgruntle that routine, I'm a little upset. Now, a few times, but it has happened, I hit all 18 lights between me and 
my workplace. And I did count. Yes, I know how many there are. And I hit every one of them. And I arrived with a little bit of, of upsetness thinking I'm going to be late for work. And I left on time. That's displeasing to the Lord. You know who's in control of those red lights and the speed of traffic? It's not me. It's not the other drivers. It's the Almighty God of Heaven. So why should I be upset? And so Peter had that same attitude. He was in the same situation and said, yeah, I'll do it. I don't think there's any need in it. I don't think there's any wisdom in it. But I will do it. And that's most of us today. When we knock on the door of our neighbor for the 14th time, we don't see a need in it. But Christ does. We don't see any sense in it. Now when we get to do it like that, we're measuring from the flesh and not measuring from the Spirit. And so a bit disgruntled, he does go ahead with it. In verse 6, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Now, uh, this was not the kind that Peter was usually uh, accustomed to pulling in and bringing them in. And, and pulling them in, he usually got a routine draw. And most of us on a daily basis get a routine draw. And sad to say, we're very satisfied with it. We, we, you know what? We've got, we've got so used to a routine draw that we, we would be amazed if something like this would happen. Now I will say this. In the Gospel of John, we're given the number of fishes they drew out. It was 153. And our God does everything in specifics. That's why, that's why particular redemption and God knowing the redeemed before the foundation of the world, that's why that's true. And so we see that he draws in this great number of fish and it began to sink his boat. He called to Andrew and it began to sink, uh, sink Andrew's boat as well. Now, that's a great display of God's power. And unfortunately, many, many times that we, we almost need a, a, a fleshly, carnal experience to believe God is who He says He is. We're not satisfied with the spiritual. We're not satisfied with the everyday. We want something more. And if you remember, the Lord Jesus... The bulk majority of the reason many followed him was the food. They weren't interested in the things of God. They weren't interested in who Christ was. They wanted their belly full. In fact, whenever he, he broke it down for them and said, I'm the bread of life. And said, this is a hard saying. And many loved him. And he looked, he looked at his apostles and said, Will you leave also? And, and, and so we find then that our Lord Jesus was very, was very much testing and teaching Simon's faith. And I want you to see that in uh, verse 20, I mean, excuse me, verse 8. The Bible says, And when, when Simon Peter saw it, this great amount of fish, and when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Amen. Now, I want you to see that uh, this great experience brought him to the point that he knew Christ was different. We need a situation in our life, and if you've never experienced it, you you look at yourself real quick, carefully that we know Christ is God. That we know Christ personally. See, in comparison to the holiness of Christ, he saw himself filthy. In comparison to the, the holiness and the deity of Christ, he saw himself as filthy and stinking. You know what? If you've never seen yourself in that light, you better make sure that you're saved. You better make sure you know that you know that you know because even the very best that we have to offer as, as, is as filthy rags according to the prophecy of Isaiah. So if you've not seen yourself in that and Peter's seen himself in that. Peter recognized his situation. Peter recognized
recognized how helpless he really, really, truly was. But much time later in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 16, 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now do you see, do you see the differences that happened in that interim? And I don't know what the interim was, I don't know how long in, in between those dates, but Peter became something different. Peter became something uh, useful. Peter became something that the Lord used time and time and time again. But all through the ministry of Christ, he was molded and he was chiseled on and he was formed because we know even the very night of the crucifixion, he says, I don't know the man. See, he wasn't quite ready yet, was he? And, and so we find then that the Lord Jesus calls Peter and he, he pulls him to his self. Go with me to Acts chapter 4. Some probably three and a half years, maybe a little bit more by now. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Now, I want you to tell us talking about this group of Jews and, and, and some of the critics around them. They saw the boldness of Peter. Now, you ask yourself, are you bold in the things of Christ? Now, I'm not talking about loud mouth, but I mean bold in the things of Christ. What's your Facebook account look like? Are you bold in the things of Christ? What does your friend group look like? Are you bold in the things of Christ? See, Peter had went from this everyday person that recognized his sinfulness to the point that he was bold in Christ. You know, you know what the problem is today? The problem is this, we're not bold in Christ. We want to sit back and say whatever is, whatever is will be what will be. Who cares? God's sovereign. God's in control. I don't care about anybody else. You know what? We need to value other people's opinion of us. People don't do that today. I don't care what other people think about me. Well, you better. Because you know what that is? That's your testimony. That's how you present to others. And, and, and so we see then that the Lord Jesus, uh, in this circumstance and in this situation, Peter was very emboldened. He had changed. The Lord Jesus Christ had given uh, strength and had, had brought him along the way. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, I ask you this morning, does anybody recognize and see that you had been with Jesus? Now, they didn't individually know these people. They didn't know. They had not met them. Nobody had introduced them. They were in a big, uh, a big number of people. And these people that did not know them, that did not know that they had turned, attended First Baptist Jerusalem, none of them things was known. They took note that they had been with Jesus. Now can somebody make that note about you? This one's different. Th th this one has more strength than others. This is one that has an interest in, in, in the true things of God. This one has uh, more, com more than the common everyday fascism of Christianity. Verse 14. And beholding the man that was healed standing with them they could say nothing against it. Now, if you underline in your Bible, you underline there because it said they could say nothing against it. Now, this is the day which we live. The majority of us, a lot of people, could have plenty to say against us. And you know what? Be justified and truthful in what they were saying. And you know what? That ought to bring our pride completely out of the picture. I've told you before and I'll tell you again. There's people that what I say concerning it to Christ is really kind of, it, it, it's almost meaningless to them because they know huh, 
They were my party buddies and they were people that they'd say, you're not a Christian. See, I, I will never regain that back, will I? I will never bring that back. But Peter had this note that they said of him, he's been with Jesus and there's nothing that we can say about it. He understands the Lord. Now you begin to think of Peter and his powerfulness. You begin to think of Peter and his usefulness to Christ. And he begins to be someone that we ought to at least think about when we think about our testimony before others. Peter was an unusual individual. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, in verse 39. Acts chapter 9, in verse 39, the Bible says, Then Peter arose and went with them. Now the individuals that he went with uh, were uh, non-Jews. They, they, the, uh, they were the Gentiles. They were the people that weren't looked at very highly by the Jews. But if you know this uh, course of Scripture... What was said just above that, that Paul had this, excuse me, Peter had this vision and that he saw this great uh, cloak that would come down and open and it would have uh, what the Jew would consider nasty beast. And he would, and the Lord said to him, rise, kill and eat. He said, not so, Lord, because unclean has never passed my mouth. You know what? That's a, that's a mode of self-righteousness. And it is still in Peter. It had to be get, gotten rid of. You know what? I, I think there's a mode of self-righteousness in many of us today. I love the truth. But you know what? Every bit of truth that I know has been revealed to me by merciful, gracious Father. And I should never be proud of it. I should never, you know, I'm a sovereign grace Baptist. Well, you know what? He took something, he took nothing and made something out of it. That's about the extent of all that I could say. And, and, and we get really hung up on words, don't we? So Peter, being a self-righteous Jew, said, Not so, Lord, I won't do it. And then the Lord spoke to him and said, Not call, call not <laughs> unclean. With what I have said is clean. And, and so he had had this vision. And it was a vision. It was a trance like state. Is what the Bible says concerning it. And the apostles had frequently those events. And so he says. Then Peter arose and went down with them. This group that had sent from him. This, this group that had an interest in truth. Uh, then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come. They brought into the upper, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats that Dorcas had made. Now, this is a little uh, further over in the uh, in the raising of Dorcas. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning unto him to the body, said, Tabitha. Arise, And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave, and he gave her his hand, and he lifted her up. And, and when he had called the saints and the widows, presented her alive. Now, I want you to see here, again, after accepting Cornelius' people and the non-Jew, and it's very important that you understand what he was doing. Then we find him just a little bit later raising the dead. Now, do you think that miracle could be repeated? I think that it could if, the, if we had faith enough. But, you watch what I'm saying. There'll be false people that come and do this. Could God do it for His own glory and honor? Sure He could. There was nothing special about Peter. In fact, he, he had a lot of hang-ups. But I want you to see, because of his faith and his belief, he said, Tabitha, arise! And she, and, and she did just that. A common, ordinary man lended to the use of the Lord. You know what? Uh, I think, if we'd be honest, if the Lord 
used us to pray and see someone rise up from the dead, it would be very, very easy for us to get prideful. Now go with me uh, to chapter 10, drop down to verse 13, Acts chapter 10 and verse 13. This was the scriptures I was referring to. And there came a voice to him saying, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And again, the great cloak had come down and it had the filthy beast, such as swine, that the Jew was not able to eat of, that, that was filthy and dirty in their sight. And he says, Rise, kill and eat. Verse 14, But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Now, when an individual is saved, don't you be the judgmental one and say, You know what? That's common. That's, that's disgusting. I don't believe it. That, that there's no way that so and so can be saved. You know what? When we say that, what we're really doing is limiting the power of God. You know what? The Bible says God will save them, so He will. From the from the elite down to the most filthy that you can think about. And you know what? When we do a gradient on, a gradient on sin, that's not pleasing to God. The Bible says one jot and tittle is just as bad as the worst. So don't you begin to granulate sin. The Lord is not pleased with that in any kind of way whatsoever. And, and, and so we see that this, uh, this vision that he had, this vision that he understood, was concerning the Gentile, concerning you and I. Verse number 19. While Peter thought on the vision... The Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, get thee down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And when Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause whereof ye are come? Now I want you to see that we find an obedience in Peter that violated the Jewish law. We have an obedience in Peter that kind of gigged the pride that he took in in being a Jew. That kind of gigged him in, in the self-righteousness that most Jews possessed. Now certainly we want to be able, the Bible says, to defend the faith. But listen, don't you get prideful in the faith. Because very frequently you do. You know what is the difference between us and another believer that don't know the truth concerning separation, concerning the church, or whatever you want to fill that blank in with? The goodness of God. That is the only difference because it is revealed truth. And we get real prideful real quick. We get real real uh, condescending really, really quick. And so we, we as the Lord's people then need to be very mindful. And we see that in the life of Peter, the Lord God Almighty made it very clear and, and, and set it straight. Now drop down to verse 28. And he said unto them, meaning Peter, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one, another, one of another nation. But God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. See, he got the truth that was wedged in his brain. It was written in his heart. He said, how can I call you something that you're not? How can I go back to the Judeo-Mosaic law and, and say that I'm better than you? It can't be done. That was now etched in his heart. You ever, you have a cherished truth that you know the Lord etched in your heart? Such as salvation completely of divine grace, nothing more, nothing less. No baptism, no church membership. Not, none of the foolishness that man puts to it, but just by divine grace, by him speaking life. You know what? That is a revealed truth. And we should rejoice in it. 
Now all through his life, Peter had been taught, you don't fool with a Gentile. You don't sit with a Gentile. You don't touch a Gentile. You don't, you don't sit down and eat meat with a Gentile. Gentiles are dirty. Gentiles are disgusting. Gentiles are not the people that you need to be around with. And had coated his brain so long that really he was a racist in every sense of the word. You know what? We live in what is referred to as the Bible Belt. But if we're not very careful, what we have here is racism. You know, we th this building is built in Dover's black community. And if we have an African American coming to the room this morning, they ought to be welcomed with open arms and given the best seat in the house. But Peter realized that that was broken down. That his pride meant nothing. That being Jew was no more than being said that he was an Egyptian. And so he embraced this truth. He was, he was, he was glad in it. He joyed in it. He was happy in it. And he glorified God. Drop down to verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of the truth, I perceive God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he... In every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, I want you to see, I perceive that there are redeemed in all nations. I perceive that there are people that love God everywhere. I perceive that, 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 that there is people all through the world that are and will be saved. That's a revealed truth. That's a blessing of God. That, that, that is something to glorify God in. And Peter finally got it. Again, every truth revealed to you is an act of God. It is not a function of man. And so we see that blessed be the name of the Lord that Peter got it. But unfortunately... It didn't last long. Go with me to Acts. Acts chapter 12. We see another teaching of Peter. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without, uh, without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Now you need to get the the full effect of this. He was locked up. He was in a situation that was hopeless. And at daylight, he was getting his head cut off. Now, you put yourself into that situation. You put yourself, on the morrow, you're going to lose your head. If you don't deny, and really what it was, if you don't say you're a good Jew, you're losing your head. Because he could have compromised. He, he could have given in to it. He could have said, I renounce everything that I've already done. And you know what? I really believe that we will have a time, possibly sometime in the near future, where you'll be given the opportunity to renounce or say, no, I stand for Christ. And, and, and you know, what the, what the impulse of the flesh is, oh, I'll be there, I'll stand for truth. Listen, when you're looking eyeball to eyeball, and they have your babies, you don't know what you'll do. That's the simple truth. I would that I would stand true. But listen, when they're dragging Bella off somewhere, you know what? I'd probably change my tune if I did not have the strength and power of God. And listen, you won't get that strength and power by an everyday one, two, three uh, routine service of God. You'll get it by trying Him. 
And you know what? How Peter arrived at this place. He had tried the Lord and he found Him faithful. He had tried the Lord and saw that He was who He said He was. He had tried the Lord and knew exactly that He would be faithful. Verse 6, And when Herod would have brought Him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shone in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him uh, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Now I will I will uh, interject this. The light only shines to whom God wants it to. And the voice is only heard by whom God wants it to be heard. Because you know what? If he had not limited that bright light, everybody would have seen it. See, the, 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 the cops were on both sides to him. The, the jailers were locked to him. And the bright light was there, but only Peter seen it. When the chains fell off, God of heaven silenced their ears to it. Have you ever dropped a chain on the planks and, the, and the, it has a real clunky sound? Why didn't they hear it? Well, because God didn't want them to hear it. And why do some people never hear the gospel? Because God, and as, as hard as this is, God just don't want them to hear it. Right? We, we have to believe that. If the other part is true, <laughs> we have to believe both sides of it. Otherwise, our God is, is nothing more than a fairy tale. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals, and so he did, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Now, we see Peter now uh, being delivered of God. If you know your Bible, it goes down to Rhoda's house, where the church is having a prayer meeting. Now, what surprised me about that church's prayer meeting, when Peter shows up, they're not even, uh, they're, they're amazed. They didn't even expect their prayers to be true. They didn't even expect their prayers to be granted. You know what? It probably deteriorated to nothing more than, well, we'll see Peter on the other side. You know why? Because they lack confidence. And, and in their prayers. They lacked belief in what was being said. They went through the motions. And oh, church, I, I think so much of the time, all our people today are just going through the motions, they're going through the routine, and they don't believe in the God that we serve. They don't have confidence. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. If He can raise the dead then, He can raise the dead today, if He chose to do it. And you've heard Him limited, but the only thing it is, the people People that limit God have no Bible for what they've limited God to. In every age, God has raised the dead if He so chose. Right? Yeah, I'm not saying I'm going to raise somebody the dead. I'm not Jack Van MP or any of that crew. But I will say this He can if He wants to. Amen. He can if He wants to. Now, lastly, and I'm sorry I have left the verse out of my outline, but you all know it. I think it's in the Galatian letter. Let me look. Paul writes to the church and says this, that he withstood Peter to his face. Now what Peter had done, he had taken again and said, you know what? I'm not going to eat with the Jews. I, I mean, excuse me, I'm not going to eat with the Gentiles. He would sit at a different table. He would sit at a different area. He would go somewhere else. He had retaken in that self-righteousness that came from being a Jew. And Paul said, I would have stood into his face. I said, uh, Paul said, uh, this is not right. 
This is not what this is not what the scriptures teach. He, he went straight into his face. Now, again, don't get down on Peter. We've all we've all looked at the miraculous things that Peter accomplished. We 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 look again and again at how he was simply a vessel for the Lord. How that he definitely was willing down to go down to Cornelius' house and to present the truth to them too. But somewhere along the way, he got messed up. You know what? Somewhere along the way, you're going to get messed up. Somewhere along the way, I'm going to mess up. Somewhere along the way, every one of us has got cold and indifferent to the things of God. People, uh, people, I'm sure Peter began to fear because remember, he pastored First Baptist Jerusalem. And so if that's true, what were the bulk majority, if not all the members? Jews. So it's real easy to get self-righteous among your kindred, isn't it? It's real easy to get self-righteous and say, Oh, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been sovereign grace so long, uh, the Armenian folks are foolish in what they believe. Don't you go there. You know what? People that don't dress right make me sick. You know what? The only reason you know those truths is because God revealed them to you. Why are you down with somebody else? There you go. Oh, I'm so glad I'm in a scriptural church. Well, I am too. But you know, the only difference between me and them is the Lord God mercifully showed me what a scriptural church consists of. Peter had gotten, had gotten taken in by the world. Peter had been sucked in by his own brethren. And we need never have that air of self-righteousness. Instead, it should be really that we approach them in pity. Out on the streets, that's woke my eyes to this. Don't you look down your nose at anybody. You know, whenever a woman comes to me in a pair of short breeches and says, uh, could I have a Bible? I said, yes, most certainly, ma'am. And you have two if you want them. Because there but by the grace of God go I. Mm -hmm. See, we, we, we don't need to strive to be self-righteous. But rather, we need to learn to glorify God and the truths Amen. that He's given us. Because you know what? He could, it, I believe in a, a particular redemption and deliberate salvation by God. Do you not? Well, if we believe that and we do, then we have to believe that He's deliberate in revealing of all truth. Right? Not just the Son of God. Not just salvation. But He sovereignly reveals truth when He's ready and they're given to us as precious jewels. No, nothing to be prideful in. Nothing to be. Nothing to take our boast in. Then the last time we hear Peter, we really, I have to say this, don't know much about what happened after this. The Fox's Book of Martyrs and the Martyrs' Mirror both tell us that Peter died. With his only last request being that he would be crucified upside down instead of right side up. Now, the truth is, you don't know if that's true, and I don't know if that's true, because it's not inspired right. Correct? I, I tend to believe it is. Historically, it looks like it's very real. But, again, we have to just take that as simply history and nothing more. But I want you to believe, I want you to see something where I believe that Peter came back to the truth. First Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered abroad, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, I want you to see what he says about himself. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. 
excuse me, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. He does not say Peter the Jew. He doesn't say Peter the pastor at Jerusalem. Just a very brief statement. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. He says nothing of his Judaism. He says nothing of crime. Just Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. Now again, Paul had somewhat to boast, is how he puts it himself. But read the Paulician letters this week. He usually said more about himself. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing Paul at all. What a wonderful, what a wonderful mouthpiece and uh, what a wonderful utensil that the Lord used him for. But I'm saying Peter said less. See that there was a spirit of humility about that. Peter just simply said, All I am is an apostle. He didn't say anything about being Jewish. See, we, we need we need to capture that, Peter. We need to learn from our past mistakes. And simply spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell people of what He's done for you. You say, Brother Larry, I'm no preacher. I didn't, I didn't ask you if you were a preacher. I told you to go and spread the wonderful gospel of Christ. And you know what? All you need is this. Christ did this for me. You don't have to memorize verses, which is fine. You don't have to, you don't have, to have a, a set mindset of what you're going to say. But simply say, I was here, and Christ placed me here. That's all you need to say. Right? Brother Junior, you come and Donald.